Live from Midtown Manhattan, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2017. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem sponsors. Okay, welcome back everyone. Live in Manhattan, this is theCUBE's coverage of our fifth year doing Big Data NYC, eighth year covering Hadoop World, which is now involved into Strata Data, which is right around the corner. We're doing that in conjunction with that event. This is again where we have the thought leaders, we have the experts, we have the entrepreneurs and CEOs come in, of course. The who's who in tech, and my next two guests is Jagain Sundar, CUBE alum that I was on yesterday, CTO of WAN Disco. You know, one of the hottest companies, most valuable companies in the space for their unique IP. And not a lot of people know what they're doing, so congratulations on that. But you're here with one of your partners, a company I've heard of called Microsoft, uh, also doing extremely well with Azure Cloud. We got uh, Pranav Rastogi, who's the program manager at Microsoft Cloud Azure. Um, you guys have an event going on as well, um, at Microsoft Ignite, which has been creating a lot of buzz this year. Again, as usually, they have a good show, but this year the cloud certainly has taken front and center. Welcome to theCUBE, and good to see you again. Thank you. Thank All right, you so talk about the partnership. You guys, um, Jagainer deals with all the cloud guys. You're here with Microsoft. What's going on with Microsoft? Obviously they've been, you know, if you look at the stock price, I mean, from 20 something to complete changeover under the leadership of Satya Nadella, the, the company's mobilized, the cloud has got traction, putting a dent in the universe, certainly Amazon feels a little bit of pain there, but in general, a lot more work to do. What are you guys doing together? Share the relationship. So uh, we just announced a product that's a one-click deployment in the Microsoft Azure Cloud of Vendisco's Fusion replication technology. So if you've got some data assets, Hadoop or cloud object stores mm -hmm. on-premise, and you want to create a hybrid or a cloud-to-cloud -cloud environment with Azure in the picture, ours is the only way of doing it active-active. Active, and then there is some stuff out there that's looking like active-active, data plane by Hortonworks, but it's truly really not active-active, we talked about it yesterday. Yes. Um, Microsoft, you guys, what's the interesting about these guys besides the active actors? It's a unique thing, it's an ingredient for you guys. Yeah, so the interesting thing for us is uh, the biggest problem that we think customers have from a big data perspective is uh, if you look at the landscape of the ecosystem in terms of open source mm -hmm. projects that are available, it's very hard to A, figure out how do I you know, use this software, B, how do I install it? And so what we have done is we've created an experience in Azure HD Insight where you can discover these applications within the context of your cluster. And you can install these applications by a one-click install, which installs the application, configures it, and then you're good to go. And we think that this is going to sort of uh, increase the productivity of uh, users sort of trying to get sense out of big data. And uh, you know the key challenges that we think customers have today is sort of setting up some sort of a hybrid environment between how do you connect your on-premise data to uh, sort of move it to the cloud. And there are different use cases that you can have. You know, you can move parts of your data and you can do experiment easily in the cloud. Uh, and so what we've done is, you know, we've enabled uh, Vandisco as an application on, an, on our HD Insight uh, application platform where customers can sort of install it using a single click deploy, mm -hmm. connect it with the data that's sitting on-prem use the active-active uh, feature to sort of have both these environments running uh, simultaneously and they're in sync. So one benefit's the one-click thing, that's on your side, right? You guys right. are enabling that. So okay, I get that, that's totally cool. We'll get that in a second, I want to kind of drill down on that. But what's the benefit to the customers that you guys are having? So I'm a customer, I one-click, I want some WANDISCO, active-active. Why am I doing it? What does the cloud change? What is, how does your cloud change from that, uh, from that experience? Yeah, so one example that you can think about that's going to change is, uh, in an on-premise environment, you have a cluster running, but you're kind of limited on what you can do with the cluster because you've already set up the number of nodes and the workloads you're running is fairly finite. Uh, but you know what's happening in, in, in sort of reality in today is uh, lots of users, especially in the machine learning space and AI space and in the analytics space, are using a lot of open source libraries and technologies, and they're using it on top of like Hadoop, they're using it on top of Spark. However, like in experimenting with these technologies is hard on on-prem because it's a locked environment. So we believe like with the cloud, like especially with, a, with an offering like Vandisco on HD Insight, once you move the data, you can start spinning up clusters, you can start installing more open source libraries, mm -hmm. experiment, and you can shut down the clusters when you're down. So it's going to sort of increase your efficiency, it's going to allow you to experiment faster, and it's going to reduce your cost as well because you don't have to have the cluster running all the time. And once you are done with your experimentation, uh, then you can decide like which way do you want to go. 
So it's going to remove so again, the friction. What's your experience with Azure? I mean, a lot of people have been, some people have been critical. I mean, rightfully so, you guys are moving as fast as you can. You can only go as fast as you can, but the success of the cloud has been phenomenal. You guys have done a great job with, with, with the cloud. I've got to give you props on that. Your customers are benefiting, or Microsoft's customers are benefiting. What's the, how does it, how's the relationship? Are you getting more customers through these guys? Are you yes. bringing customers from on-prem to cloud? What's, how's, how's the customer uh, so, flow going? So, um, almost all of our customers who have on-prem instances of Hadoop are considering cloud in one form or the other. Mm -hmm. uh, different clouds have different strengths as they've found. And different uh, technology. Indeed, yeah. and, and uh, Azure strengths appear to be the H HD Insight piece mm -hmm. of it. And as Pranav just mentioned, uh, the cool thing is you can replicate into the cloud, start up a 15 node Spark cluster today to run a query that may return results to you really fast. Mm -hmm. Now remember, this is data that you can write to both in the cloud and on premise. It's kept consistent by our technology. Or tomorrow you may find that somebody tells you Hive with the new Tez enhancements is faster. Sure, spin up a 100 node Hive cluster in the cloud. HD Insight support that, supports that really well. You're getting consistent data and your queries will respond much faster than your on premise. We've had Oliver uh, Chu on before with Hortonworks, obviously they're partnering there. HD Insights has been getting a lot of traction lately. Where's that going? I mean, we've, had some, we've seen some good buzz on that, good people talking about it. What's the latest update on your end? Uh, HD Insights is doing really good. Uh, the customers love the ease of uh, sort of creating a cluster using a, just a few clicks. And the benefits that customers get, you know, clusters are optimized for certain scenarios. So if you're doing uh, data science, you know, you can create a Spark cluster, install open source mm -hmm. libraries. Uh, we have Microsoft R server sort of running on uh, Spark, uh, which is a unique offering to Microsoft, which lots of customers have uh, sort of appreciated. Uh, you know, we, we also have uh, streaming scenarios that you can do using open source technologies, like uh, we have Apache Kafka mm -hmm. uh, running on our stack, which is uh, becoming very popular uh, from an ingestion perspective. You know, folks are- Has the Kubernetes craze uh, come down to, to your, your group yet? Has it trickled down? It seems to be going crazy. You hired an amazing person from Google, Brendan Burns, we've interviewed before. Um, he was part of the original Kubernetes spec. He now works for Microsoft. Yeah, What's so the buzz on the Kubernetes container world there? Uh, so in general, Microsoft Azure has seen sort of great benefits out of it. Yeah. Uh, so we are seeing lots of traction uh, in that space. So for my role in particular, like I focus more on the HD insights, sort of mm -hmm. big data space, uh, which is kind of outside of uh, what we do with the Kubernetes. Right, itself. and the relationship going strong with WANDisco? Yes, so right. we just like launched this offering uh, just about yesterday is what we announced. Yeah. And we're looking forward to getting customers uh, onto the stack. That's awesome. And what's your take on um, the industry right now? Obviously, the um, the partnerships are becoming clearer as people can see their swim lanes, and you're starting to see the, the notion of infrastructure and services are changing, and more and more people want services. And then you've got the the infrastructure, classic infrastructure. It looks like it's going to be hybrid. That's pretty clear. We see that uh, services versus infrastructure. How should customers think about um, how they architect their environment so they can take advantage of the active active and also have a you know robust clean not a lot of reskilling going on but you know more of a uh, good organization from a personnel standpoint but yet get to uh, a hybrid architecture so uh, it depends uh, the cloud sort of gives you lots of options to meet the customers where they are and different yeah. customers have different kinds of requirements uh, you know, customers who have specialized some of their applications yeah. would probably want to go more of an infrastructure route. But customers uh, would also love to have some of the past benefits where, you know, I have a service running mm -hmm. where I don't have to worry about the infrastructure, like how does patching happen, how does OS updates happen, how does maintenance happen. Uh, they want to sort of rely on the sort of the Microsoft Azure Cloud provider to take care of it so that they can focus on their application specific logic or business specific logic or their analytical workloads and sort of worry about optimizing those parts of the application because you know that is their core. Uh, That's been great, I want to get your thoughts real quick. Put, share some color what's going on inside Microsoft. Obviously open source has become really big part of the culture. Um, even just at Ignite, more Linux news is coming. Uh, you guys are involved in Linux. Obviously open source with Azure, ton of stuff I know is built in the Microsoft Cloud on open source. Um, you're contributing now to the Kubernetes I mentioned earlier. Seems to be a good cultural shift at Microsoft. What's the vibe on the open source internally at Microsoft? Can you share just some anecdotal kind of like uh, uh, insight into what's the vibe like inside around open source? 
So the vibe has increased quite a lot around uh, open source. Uh, you know, you rightly mentioned, right, just recently we announced a SQL Server on Linux as well uh, at the Ignite conference. Uh, you can also deploy a SQL Server on a Docker container, uh, which is quite revolutionary uh, if you think about sort of how, how forward we have come. And, uh, you know, open source is so pervasive, like it's almost used in a lot of these yeah. projects. And uh, Microsoft uh, employees are sort of uh, contributing back to open source project in terms of you know, bug fixes, feature requests, or mm -hmm. documentation updates. So it's a very, very active community. And by and large, I, I think customers are sort of benefiting all up because there's so many folks working together on like open source projects and sort of making them successful. Yeah. Uh, and especially around the Azure Stack, you know, we also ensure that you can run these open source workloads reliably in the cloud. Yeah. So from an enterprise perspective, you get the best of both worlds. You get the latest innovations happening in open source, plus the reliability of the managed platform that Azure provides at an enterprise scale. So again, obviously Microsoft partnership is huge. You've got other clouds as well. Where do you want to take the relationship with Microsoft? What happens next? You guys just continue to do business? You're like, spec in the one click's nice. I have some questions on that, but right. what happens next? So I see our partnership becoming deeper. We see the value that HD Insight brings to the ecosystem, and all of that value is captured by the data. At the end of the day, if you have stale data, if you have yeah. data that you can't rely on, the applications are useless. So we yeah. see ourselves getting more and more deeply embedded in the system. We see ourselves as an essential yeah. part of the data strategy for Azure. Yeah, we see continuous uh, in, uh, integration as a development concept, continuous analytics as a term yeah. that's being kicked around. We were talking yesterday about, um, you know, here in theCUBE, uh, real time, I want some data real time, and IT goes back, I, here it is, it's real time. No, but the data is three weeks old. Right. So, I mean, real time, it's real a word. <laughs> that doesn't mean it. I got to see a really fast, low latency response. You know, well, that's not the data I want. I right. meant the data in real time, not you giving me a real time query. Right. So again, this brings up a, a mind shift in terms in terms of the new way to do business in the cloud and, and yes. hybrid. So it's changing the game. As customers scratch their heads and try to figure out how to make their organizations more DevOps oriented, what do you guys see for advice for those managers who really are getting behind it, really want to make change, who kind of have to herd the cats a little bit and kind of maybe break out security and put it in its own group, or you, you come in and say, okay, IT guys, we're going to change into our operating model, even on-prem, We'll use some bursting to the cloud. Azure's got 365 on there. A lot of coolness developing. What's the advice for the mindset of the change agents out there that are going to do the transformation? So my advice would be, if you've done the same thing by hand over two times, it's time you automated it. But two times, two no times. three rule, three no, strikes you're no, out. I'm saying two you're times. saying two, contrarian. <laughs> no, that's 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 a a. Uh, careful statement because yeah. if you try automating something that you've never actually done by hand, that's a disaster as well. A couple yeah. times so you know how it's Get supposed to work. Get a good groove work. on it, yeah. Right. Then you optimize, you automate, and then you turn the knobs. So you try you know, a hundred node cluster, maybe that's going to be faster. Maybe after a certain point you don't get any improvements, so you know how to turn So take some knobs. baby steps, and one easy way to do is you know, automate something that you've done. Yes, exactly. That's it, uh, almost risk-free. Yes. Perfect. Relatively speaking, uh, thoughts on advice to change agents out there. Um, this is your your industry hat on. You can take your Microsoft hat off. Baby steps. Uh, so you start small. You get familiar with the environment, and you know tool sets are provided so that you get a consistent experience on what you were sort of doing on prem and in the sort of in hybrid space. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea is like, as you get more comfortable, the benefits of the cloud will sort of far outweigh uh, any sort of cultural changes that need to happen. Uh, to Guys, to thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Uh, thoughts on, on, on the Big Data NYC this week? What do you think? I think it's a conference that has a lot of cloud hanging over it, and people are scratching their heads, including you know vendors, customers, everybody's scratching their head, but there is a lot of cloud in this conference, although this is not a cloud conference. Yeah, they're trying to make it a da an AI conference. A lot of AI washing, certainly, we're Indeed. seeing that everywhere, but again, nothing wrong with hyping up AI. It's good for society, it really is cool, um, but still, that's talking about baby steps. AI is like, I mean, still not there. It seems like AI from when I went to, got my CS degree in the 80s, not a lot of innovation. Although machine learning is getting better, but a lot more way to go on AI, don't you think? Uh, yes, and you know, a few of the announcements that we've made uh, in this week is all about sort of making it easier for developers to get started with uh, AI and machine learning. 
Uh, and our, ho our whole hope is with these set of investments that we've done in Azure yeah. Machine Learning improvements and sort of with the companion app uh, yeah. in the workbench, sort of allows you to get started very easily uh, with AI and machine learning models and you can sort of apply and build these models, uh, do a CI CD process and deploy these models and be more effective in the space. Yeah, and also the tooling market's kind of gotten out of control. We were just joking the other day, this tool shed my mindset where everything's in the tool shed and people bought a hammer, it turned into a lawnmower. You know, so <laughs> this is like, you got to be careful which tools you have. Think about a platform, think holistically, but if you take the baby steps and, and, and implement it, certainly there. My personal opinion, I think the cloud is the, is the equalizer. Cloud can bring compute power that changes what a tool was built for. Even, go back, go back six years. The tools that were out there even six years ago Correct. are completely changed by the impact of, a, of, of unlimited, potentially unlimited capacity horsepower. So, okay, that resets a little bit. You agree? I do, I totally okay. agree. I think who wins, right. who loses on the reset? You know, the cloud is an equalizer, but there is a mindset shift that goes with that. Those who can adapt yeah. to the mindset shift will win. Those who yeah. cannot and are still uh, clinging to their old practices yeah. will have a hard yeah. time. It's exciting. If you're still reinventing Hadoop from 2011, then probably not in good shape right not now. Not a good place to be. Um, using Hadoop is great for batch, but you can't make that be a lawnmower, that's my opinion. Okay, guys, thanks for coming on, appreciate it. <laughs> He's smiling. You. you got something that you agree, <laughs> I, no, no. no. <laughs> Thank you so much for that comment. Yeah. <laughs> Tool sheds are out there, be careful. Guys, do your job, congratulations on your, on your partnership, appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, this is theCUBE, live in New York. More after this short break, we'll be right back.